Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, which is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a writer and a reader. And today I'm here to do a writer's life for me tag. As I said in my newbie video, I was going to start off with doing some different writing tags just so you get to know me a little bit better before we start getting into more writing heavy content. And I have not gone over the questions more than glanced at them, so a lot of this is going to be new for me as well as for you. So question number one, what kind of writer are you? Well, I would start off with saying at the moment I am an amateur writer. Amateur because I have not published anything, but writing is more than just a hobby for me. It is something that I would like to have published. So I'm in that before published stage. Number two, when did you start writing and what made you want to try it? I have been writing my whole life or I've been telling stories my whole life. So for me, it was very, it was a very natural fit. And I know author was one of the career options I gave in elementary school when they would ask us what we wanted to do, but I didn't really take it seriously until later in my life when I realized I like working from home. I like being responsible for my own daily tasks and nobody else telling me what to do. And I enjoy writing. It's something that is a constant. I cannot stop the stories that are populated in my head from coming out. Number three, what inspires your stories? As a writer, I get my stories from multiple different sources. What happens most often when I am come, like getting an inspiration is I start with the character. And for me, my characters do talk to me. And so I will be going along and somebody new starts talking to me and I'm like, oh, who are you? I find out their name and then find out, start finding out more about them. Now, not every character that I meet ends up having a story. Sometimes they're just interesting people doing the daily home drum lives that you and I do. I still enjoy these characters because they are, you know, the side characters. They are the walk-on parts. And it helps me to have more fully fleshed walk-on characters because I've already met them. Now, if I do have a character who has something that they're doing, something that inspires me and interests me, then I start you know, finding out more what's going on, what are you doing, and it, it goes from there. The secondary way that I get ideas is through pictures or even prompt ideas. And this is where I can spend hours on Pinterest and I'll be like, oh, that'd be an interesting story. Ooh, that'll be an interesting story. And that has caused me to have four different files, one for characters, one for plot, one for setting, and one for world building elements. And then every once in a while, a music will inspire me. Music isn't as big of an inspiration for me as it is for other writers. I don't do playlists. I don't like write listening to music because music tends to distract me from the story at hand. So yeah, normally it's the characters that inspire the stories. So number four, what themes do you explore in your writing? For me, that's a tricky one because I don't specifically write for themes. I write the story. And then upon editing and revising, if a theme pops out, then I go with it. But I'm not a theme writer. I'm more interested in what the characters are doing. Number five, are you a plotter, a pantser, or a planter? And I am a planter. I start off a pantser. My zero drafts, I just write what comes to me. I write more like in vignettes and I write the scenes out of order. So I have to then put them back in order. And once I have them in order, then I can create an outline and a plan. And I will go from there. As I am editing, then I get more structured. So six, where are you in your writing journey? I've already mentioned that I am an amateur. I am not published, but I'm at the point in my creative process where this is a goal for me. This is something I am serious about. As part of being more serious about my writings, I put together this board. And on this board, as you can see, I have concepts, I have zero draft, first draft, second draft, and the beta. And I have the little note cards with the project name 
And I'm using this to help me focus on here. These are the stories that I have made progress on. And so I'm, so I do not keep wanting to run back to the shiny idea. Instead, if I have a shiny idea, I'll write a little bit about it and then I'll stick it on the concept. So I'm trying to work on the stories that I've already done a zero draft or have started a first draft for to kind of move those stories along in the process. And in fact, today I actually printed off two zero drafts. I have a zero draft of a short story and then I have a zero draft of a novel. And I've just been put them in two colored folders so I would know the difference. And I'm going to start going through those this next week and making my notes, especially of what I would like to change up, what needs to improve point out the holes in it. That's that's the process of where, that's a process of where I am with my zero draft is pointing out the holes, scenes that I might still need to add, things that are unclear, and then after that, I'll just start going back through and just rewriting as it flows. Doing that rewrite is where I get even more in the characters heads. I tend to be a little bit moody around family and friends while I am in a character's mind but there is a cleanup of the language. The description gets better. My dialogue becomes more succinct. There's less, my character is saying this because the reader needs to know versus would my character actually say, or would my character actually talk about this subject with this person? If not, then that's where I would cut it out and try to find a different way to put the information in that the reader needs to know. Number seven. Have you entered any writing contests and did you win any? The answer is yes. I have entered a few short story contests with my sister. It was the Reader's Digest version. And that's when I realized I am not so much of a short story writer. Yeah, so it was very rough for me to write a coherent story in the time, short time frame that we had for that visit. I think I just prefer long form versus short form. And even, I'm not even a big fan of reading short stories. I do because sometimes there'll be like a brilliant short story that comes out and hits me. But I, for me, short stories is a lot more like poetry and there's gems in there, but the majority is not written for me. Eight, who are your writing heroes? I'm not sure if I actually have a writer hero There are different writers that I enjoy. I really like that some of my favorite authors like Patricia Reed have started talking about the craft. Patricia Reed does a blog um, and then other writers do that as well. I like that we have author tubes so we get to talk to one another about how things are going and again we get to talk about craft. So I guess you, my fellow writers, would be my writing hero because we are getting to have this conversation. Nine, have you been to a writing conference? I have not been to a writing conference. I've only been to science fiction, fantasy, fan conventions, and I've gone to different panels about writing at those conventions, but I've not yet been to a specific writing conference. Maybe once the pandemic has ended, or at least no longer is an issue, that can be something I can do in the future. If you know any good writing conferences that I should attend, please let me know. Just so you know, I do live in the Midwest in the United States, so something that is closer would be preferred. And then 10, what are your top three writing tips? So these are writing tips that work for me. They might not work for you, and that's okay if they don't. But first, my first writing tip is have patience with yourself. That goes with, you know, don't beat yourself up over, you're not going, the writing's not going to be perfect every single moment of the day. It's okay. If you need to take a break, take the break. If you need to revise over and over, do that. But make sure you're not beating yourself up because when I beat myself up, that's when I stop writing for long periods of time. And that's not good because then I'm not getting the creative element that I need from this process. Along with that, another writing tip is take breaks. It's okay to take a break from your work in progress. It's okay to take a break from writing. I try not to write seven days a week because I know that my mind needs time to do other things. 
I typically write Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, well, Saturday is usually my chore day. So I'm cleaning, getting things done with my husband, getting meals prepared for the next week. And then Sunday is just a complete relaxed day. I see family, hang out, play. That's also if I'm going to be watching Netflix. Sunday is usually the day that I watch Netflix. I'm not a big TV person otherwise throughout the week because I realized in order to write, I had to give something up and I decided to give up TV for the most part. So that kind of goes with my third writing tip is what are your priorities? It's a good idea to write them down. And if writing is one of your top five priorities, then you will be able to figure out the time. It might mean that one of your lower priorities you don't do every week or you don't do every day and that's okay. An example of this is my husband and I were going through our priorities and I ranked travel as a higher priority than he did. So that made us both take a step back and go, okay, how do we balance each other if one person is wanting to travel more and the other one is not? And same thing with writing. If you live by yourself, don't have any children, your time is your own. You have full control. If you're married, have children, have roommates, your time is going to have to be more of a compromise. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Again, it just goes back to what are your priorities? And for me, writing is in my top five. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions for me, please put them down in the comments. And I look forward to talking to you more. Bye.